box. Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! Among the three options, you collectively voted for an oceanic-themed doll next. Summer is here and I can't stop thinking about the beach, so this is a well-timed project. Believe it or not, I was running low on doll fodder, so after a couple eBay purchases, a fresh box of used toys arrived on my doorstep. Ta-da! Look at all those Monster High dolls! They were once somebody's childhood toys, and now who knows what they'll become. I narrowed it down to three dolls that I was feeling in the moment and asked you guys through Instagram who you thought we should use. Overwhelmingly, you chose Scara Screams. Scara, huh? Never worked with her before. She was a fairly minor character in the show that only saw a couple releases. Let's begin. Off comes her matted hair. And then off comes her head by submerging her into hot water to soften the vinyl, then tugging it off the neck peg. Rip out the remaining stubble by jiggling a pair of pliers around inside, grabbing a chunk, and pulling it out through the neck peg. Oh, that's so gross! You can see that there's a yellowish gradient creeping down her forehead here. It's a common problem, and I believe it happens partially from glue getting too hot and melting inside the head, and exposure to sunlight, which accelerates this yellowing effect in certain kinds of plastic. We'll address this later. Take 100% acetone and lift the factory paint off the face. After the majority of the work is done with a Q-tip, clean up the rest with an acetone-soaked tissue. And while I'm at it, I took off the black hair paint. Soap up the doll and rinse her off in warm water. With that, the body is prepped and ready for customization. So, oceanic. That's a very broad topic. Perhaps too broad. Everything from sandy shoreline beaches to the depths of the deep sea, from cute colorful tropical fish to the bizarre animals that lurk in the dark, there's just too much variety here. I should have chosen a more specific theme for the poll. <laughs> Whoops. There's potential for all sorts of interesting characters, but I decided to hone in on the water and waves near the shoreline, the beach. Perhaps my favorite part of the ocean. I've got nothing but happy memories concerning the beach, and even my engagement ring is a pearl, so yeah, beach lover right here. Let's begin with the hair. I've got plenty of blues to choose from, and I'm thinking a nice gradient will look perfect. I narrowed it down to three at the time, but I end up using these five colors. Paint the scalp with acrylics in preparation for the reroute. This helps the hair look thicker on the scalp, but it's also a tool that will help us place the hair in the correct spot. It's pretty simple this time, lighter color in the front to darker color in the back. Let's start in back with the dark blue. Lately I've been using the rerouting tools and combs from the Doll Planet. Lift a plug, loop it over your nail, then slide it into the tool, and pop it into the head. I usually go around the whole head in a spiral, but this time I'm filling in each color at a time. I did feather the colors together just a bit as I transitioned into the next color, as opposed to sticking strictly to hard lines. I gave her a widow's peak by poking new holes in with a sewing pin, and after that's filled in, all the plugs have been filled. Although, I thought the gradient needed more range. So let's add white to the front and indigo to the back for more drama. There we go, that looks a lot more finished. The TARDIS color feels like the deeper water, and the streaks of Patronus look like sea foam at the top of the wave. Now to seal in our new hair. I'm trying out the Doll Planet's Galaxy Glue this time around. It's notably more liquidy than the Fabri-Tac I've been using. Anyone else have a problem with Fabri-Tac solidifying into an unusable mass about halfway through the bottle? I can never use it all before that happens. What a waste. Anyway, squeeze some glue into the head, work it around with a stick, or squish the sides together to make sure every plug is coated on the inside. Then I set her aside to dry overnight. Here we are the next day. I'm very pleased with the new hair. It might be the prettiest reroute I've ever done. Just look at that refreshing ocean wave of a gradient. I love it. But I've got to tuck it away for now in preparation for the face. I do the usual masking off with pins and scrap fabric, but come back a second time to really fine tune the hairline. I'm going a little nuts with the pins here because I want a very precise mask. 
There, like that. Now we can address the icky yellowing on the forehead by taking her to the airbrush station. Instead of just fixing the color back to mint green, why not give her a gradient skin tone too? The Doll Fairy's Solgaleo custom crossed my mind when I got this idea. I thought the way she did the forehead color gradation on that doll looked really cool, so I'm going to do that but with white instead. Yes, this is totally a design choice and not because I was feeling lazy and didn't want to color match the perfect mint green. I had some left over, so I added a fade to white at her fingers too. Once the paint has thoroughly dried, I spray on two coats of Mr. Super Clear sealant. Then it's back to the work table. Hmm. I had a clear vision for her hair, but I'm not sure what to do for the face. This is what happens when we're making it up as we go along, I suppose. Stock box rules and all. Well, let's begin with seafoam green eyeshadow. And lips. Scara has very defined eye molding, so I might as well stick to the guide this time. I start with a light blue before transitioning to my darker blues and greens. I thought a dreamy, gradient eye would be beautiful and mysterious, so I'm intentionally leaving out the pupils. I dab on some more pastel to form eyebrows. At first I thought small blobby bubble shapes would be cute, but then changed my mind and elongated them into more normal shapes. Around this point I spray her again with MSC. You'll reach a point where your colors refuse to layer anymore and that's when you want a fresh coat of sealant. It's like making a new layer in Photoshop. I average about three coats of sealant during a face-up, not including the initial and final spray. Remember how we aimed for that marbled effect with acrylic paint and macaroon's eyes? I'm going to try that again, but this time I'm going to use the watercolor pencils themselves. I don't know why I didn't think of this for macaroon, it's a lot easier. So I lift pigment off the watercolor pencils with a brush and apply it to the iris one color at a time. Then, because you can reactivate watercolors anytime you want, you don't have to worry about them drying like acrylics, I come back with a dab of water and delicately swirl the pigments. Not bad. Doing it this way lays much flatter than acrylics as well. I wasn't sure about eyelashes, but in the end went for stylized, rounded lashes. Like fish scales or fins, maybe. I wasn't happy with her eyebrows at this point. Ah, my old nemesis. I finally realized that the rectangular shape I've given the brows wasn't present anywhere else in the design. Her lash line is round, the lashes are round, the brows need to be round also. And darker. Add white sparkles to the eye with paint. I liked the white dots enough, I went ahead and gave her a dusting of subtle white sparkles across her cheeks. After the final layer of sealant, we can re-glossify those eyes with varnish. Yes, that really brings out the color too. Let's have some fun with the lips. Yes, it's a bag of glitter. You know where this is going. Paint a thin layer of glue on the lips, then dab on the glitter. I did it section at a time for better precision, as opposed to all at once. Tap off the excess, and of course, scoop all the excess glitter back into your container to use again. The time has come to unwrap the hair burrito. This part is always satisfying because we're seeing the hair and face together for the first time. Heat up the vinyl around the neck hole with a hair dryer and reunite the head and body. Looks like my masking job wasn't perfect, so I'll have to touch it up. Alright, not that I don't love gigantic poofy hair, but let's convince the fibers to lay down by pouring boiling water over the doll's head. Uh oh. 
As I blotted away the water from the doll's face, I saw blue pigment coming off. That's not good. I quickly discovered it was coming from her eyebrows. Jeez, how did that happen? I must have kept working on the eyebrows after the final spray of sealant and then forgot to seal it again. I'll have to touch them up too. Not wanting to use sealant again now that I've unmasked and glossified the eyes, I'm just gonna paint the brows with acrylics, which are much more durable by themselves than the pencils are. So she'll be fine. It's fine. This is fine. Let's finish the hair now. I've recently started following Antestrada Hair on Instagram, and wow, talk about incredible hairstyling skills. I was so inspired to try something like this on a doll. If I can braid the doll's hair half as well as Antonio, I will be ecstatic. I knew I wanted some sort of layered braiding on this character so that I could exhibit all the pretty colors underneath and swirl them together. Maybe a big complicated braid cascading down the back. Uh... I watched several different tutorials, but just couldn't get this infinity braid to work. I don't know what my problem was. I lost count, and obviously this is edited too, but I think I tried braiding the hair about eight times? I wanted cool hair jewelry in there too, but it just looks like some junk got caught in there. Okay, so a couple more tries off camera and I finally arrived at something decent. It's a standard French braid that gets tied off into a ponytail. Now I'm going to twist the hair around into a bun like this. I failed at buns in the past when styling nylon doll hair because it's just way too thick to simply pin out of sight like you would on a human being. So to finish the bun, I tie it off in the back and then take another elastic and bind it to a section of hair directly underneath to anchor it in place. Now we take some lengths of hair from the front and, uh... Well... I have failed you, Antonio. For a subtle wave, I braid all the hair and pour boiling water on top once again. Do a couple passes between the hot water and dunking it into the cold water to really set the style. Pat it down with a towel and let it dry overnight. Aw, oh, that's classic mermaid hair. How about the outfit? There's plenty of oceany fabrics to choose from, but what to make? I was flipping through my fabrics when... Oh yeah, what's this? A gorgeous blue ball gown that Mom Lightful made? Yes, my mom has continued working on patterns for the Etsy store behind the scenes, and this is one of the completed ones. You may recognize it as the Banshee's dress. It's the same pattern. It's perfect for this doll. Even the fabric has a bubbly texture to it. And yeah, shameless plug for the Etsy shop. Pretty, but everything needs more beach-like elements. What have I got here? I'm sure we can work some of these things onto the doll. I love shell wind chimes, which was the inspiration for these hair decorations. I tied a piece of sea glass to the end, then strung together beads and actual shells that I've collected from various beach trips. It's fairly common to find shells with existing holes, so I didn't have to drill through them or anything. Nature did that for me. Five looks like enough. I tied them all to a separate string, then tied it around her bun. To make the dress more thematic, I paint a water surface-like pattern onto each tier of the dress using white acrylic paint. I googled some images, which I'm referencing off-screen, to get a feel for it. Although after painting three tiers of water surface patterns, I got pretty good at making it up as I went. It almost makes the dress look too busy and complicated, but it's such a neat effect, I think it outweighs that concern. It looks so refreshing. With a touch of glue, we can add sparkly pearls to her gown, as well as to her forehead. These are pearls and rhinestones bought in the scrapbooking section, by the way. They're really tiny and flat on one side, so perfect for dolls. Some off-white pearl-colored ribbons ought to look nice in her hair as well, and it hides the elastics out of view. The pattern comes with a corset, but instead of using that, I want her to sport something more thematically appropriate. Using embroidery thread as my rope, 
I tied together a tiny little fishing net. I've always loved looking at nautical knots and macrame, stuff like that. This simple net isn't anywhere near as complicated as some of those knots can be, but it has the same charm. It's so small. Why are miniature things so adorable? Looks good. The last thing I made worth mentioning is this shell bag, or perhaps it's a conch horn that she can blow on like an instrument. Either way, I think it's a cute accessory for an oceanic doll to possess. And that's another stock box doll done. This doll posed a bit of a challenge for me. I didn't want her to look too much like Vaporeon, or Korra for that matter. So as I made this doll, I was somewhat consciously avoiding similar design choices. Like making her part fish or something. I guess that's why I ended up focusing more on the water element itself. I hope she's different enough. Do you think she turned out too monochrome? I wonder now if I should have given her a coral lip or something, but I do like the refreshing variants of blue. As for a name, I asked you guys on Twitter and you came up with a lot of really great name suggestions, but I think we're going to go with Seychelles. Thank you so much for watching! Don't forget to vote on the next Stockbox doll in the upper right corner. I'm going to mix it up this time though. Instead of choosing the theme, how about you vote on which doll to use as a base? They're up on screen now for you to look over. Maybe I'll ask you guys on Twitter or Instagram about a theme when I'm actually sitting down to make the doll. We'll see! See you guys next time! Stay artsy! Annyeong!